Now, I've seen it all. From muscle cars to Mad Max Frankensteins, from cock cars to off-road buggies, and everything in between. I've been around the Panther community long enough to say I've pretty much seen just about every possible build that could be done with a Crown Vic. But never in all my years of being neck deep in the Panther community have I seen this. And if I gotta be honest with you guys, I'm kind of liking it. Ladies and gentlemen, feast your eyes on what I'm pretty sure is the world's first never seen one before in my life the world's first crown victoria camper so we we're gonna do this live and in color all right we're gonna, we're gonna start with that first picture the first picture that you see and you're like yo this has to be photoshopped and i'm here to tell you guys that not only is this not photoshopped but this is a very real car and as you'll soon see later it was actually even sold as well so first thing we got at a glance is a regular looking p71 and obviously it has this giant protruding camper top box on top of it now on the next picture it kind of reveals a little bit more of what's going on here and if you take a closer look just from looking at it it looks like okay first of all it looks like he split the top here let's go back to the first picture it looks like the top was split in half from end to end so just leaving the eight pillars on and now we see the back let's see here you see the windshield is completely gone it's been replaced so he cut the windshield well obviously the windshield had to go a uh, portion of the trunk i'm surprised he even left the trunk uh there you would have thought that he would have gotten rid of the trunk to add even more space but the trunk is still there and you can see there's two little windows and what literally looks like just bondo and plywood and that's it you know maybe some paper mache or something <laughs> but i mean just look at it it's literally a p71 with a camper attachment just it was just cut in half down the middle and just had some plywood and stuff just kind of bolted in this this design is completely it's ingenious like how, how come nobody's ever thought about this let's take another look at a different angle here from the other side and let me see something here. I mean, just, just gaze upon this. Gaze upon this in all its glory, guys. This is the real deal. This isn't Photoshopped or anything. This is the real deal. Um, now, in this picture, it's hard to see, but it looks like it was partially crashed. It looks like the left side of the car was actually crashed. Um, it, many of you with a keen eye will, will notice it, but... Um, it just kind of gives you a better angle of this creation and just just gaze upon it guys look at it Oh, man, we're, we're gonna get don't worry. We're gonna get some shots of the interior But damn I didn't realize that until now that it looks like the left side was crashed and you can see some of the the upper roof of the camper is kind of uh, caved in a little bit That's crazy, dude. This is crazy. Let, let's I, let's let's take a look at the interior that I know you guys are dying to look at so what here in this picture you can see it, it even fits in a garage now obviously this was before it was crashed but you can see where it literally it's big enough to where it'll fit a person comfortably but at the same time you can bag this thing up into a garage and uh, pretty much park it anywhere and you can see even to the left some uh, remnant pieces of plywood and two by fours that was used to create this thing and like I said, he kept the hood, just kind of cut out the space, and just literally cut the car in half. Uh, you know, this would be a great project with like a beater Crown Vic or an old car that was about to, you know, it's on its way out, and you just kind of want to take it camping around the state or the country, you know, just kind of have a little adventure. But let's take a look at our first interior picture. And if you look closely, you know, you got the full bed. It, it's, it runs the length of the trunk all the way up to what looks like the passenger seat. So the passenger seat was removed. Obviously, all rear seats were removed. But it looks like you could get in from the rear passenger door as well. Just open the rear passenger door and you are in your Crown Vic camper. 
You got a couple cabinets all throughout the entire uh, cabin on the inside. You got a little privacy net. And I'm not going to lie, that looks kind of comfortable. There's plenty of uh, space at the top as well. It's very roomy. Let's take a look at another interior picture here. And uh, look at that. It even has like a sky roof, like a skylight kind of thing. Damn, this is ingenious. It has a skylight. And it's got a net partition, you know. And, I mean, it's ingenious. You literally cut a Crown Vic in half, put some plywood and two-by-fours in there. And you got it yourself a freaking camper, dude. That's crazy. I'm loving that skylight, though. Like, all that in a ambient lighting. It's just so such a nice touch. And now here's the funny thing, though. This car was actually for sale. It was listed for sale on... Um, on Craigslist, and um, obviously it's probably definitely not up for sale anymore, but let's take a look at some of the specs of this car. So for starters, let's see here, we got a, it's, he wanted 3500 for it, which is, I mean, considering it's a, it's, an, it's a Crown Vic camper, would you guys pay 3500 for it? Let's, let's just take a look at a little bit more details on it and see if it's worth that price. So we have, it has 100 and 53,000 miles, so uh, that's that's not bad at all, actually, and it was a 2008, as you guys can see, so uh, not a bad year, also, and next up, it obviously was the police package, so it has that nice beefy suspension uh, to, su to support all that extra weight you're going to be adding in the camper, and it was an ex-Fort Lauderdale police car, which those cars are those. I used to have uh, an ex Fort Lauderdale uh, P71, and those are actually pretty damn well maintained. They're not really abused as much. Let's see here, and uh, and it has a class three hitch as well. I mean, so you can tow stuff. You can maybe tow in a little smaller camper to carry equipment, or I mean, this is a first for me. I'm kind of just taken back by this, but. I mean, it's real, it's live, and in the flesh, there it is. Ladies and gentlemen, your world's first ever, somebody out there bought this, somebody out there is currently owns this, Crown Victoria, police interceptor turned into a camper, and uh, I must say, with all the redneck ingenuity about it, I am thoroughly impressed, especially with that damn skylight, you gotta, you gotta just give them credit for that. And there you guys have it. Who needs to spend thousands on an RV or camper when you can put Uncle Joe's stimmy check to good use? And with just a few sheets of plywood, some Bondo, and a reciprocating saw, and of course you can't forget some good old-fashioned elbow grease, you'll have yourself a 5-star crash test rated, highway traffic splitting, intercepting homemade camper for under 500 bucks. And that's going to be it for today's video, guys. I hope it's maybe inspired some of you. Uh, looking forward to seeing a crap ton more of Crown Vic campers out there from now on. And uh, either way, man, I'll catch you guys in the next Crown Vic video. It's your boy, Mr. Random. Take it easy.